Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to talk about the uh, liquid-liquid extraction, which is one new topic in Aspen Plus. And the uh, liquid-liquid extraction is one of the processes that we use in um, uh, in industry a lot. And this is used in case of uh, having a liquid mixture that um, uh, we want to extract one of the components out of this mixture. Um, and in some cases, the distillation might not be uh, possible either for having some thermally sensitive components or for um, having a mixture that has a very uh, low difference in the uh, boiling points or is a tropic mixture or whatever. So in this case, we can do liquid liquid extraction to uh, extract one of the components, what we call uh, the solute from the mixture. Um, and to do this, we use a solvent, which is uh, an, uh, uh, like a liquid phase that it has a very high affinity to the solute that we want to extract from the mixture. And it should be or must not be miscible with the uh, liquid mixture so that we can easily separate them uh, without, without doing any, any more work. Um, and the process takes place in two steps first in mixing by mixing the two streams so that we make sure that the uh, mass transfer happens efficiently and that the, and that the two uh, um, or the two streams are um, um, like mix mix will mix together um, and uh, once the process is done of mixing and mass transfer is done as as good as we uh, we can uh, it it's um, uh, routed to separation uh, stage where the two streams are left to uh, like sp uh, separate into two uh, liquid phases and um, uh, one of them is called the extract which is the solvent with the solute uh, after getting the solute out of the liquid mixture and the raffinate is the feed mixture after losing some of the solute. Um, and this is done in uh, as I said before in a mixing tank um, it contains an agitator and uh, baffle so that the mixing is done efficiently once the mixing is done it's routed to this decanter um, as we mentioned and then we get the extract and raffinate uh, from from this decanter um, in some cases the mixing tank is built in the uh, separation unit so they're like kind of one thing um, but the, the concept is the same in both. Uh, the, the point that we need to keep in mind here is that the, uh, two, uh, the, the two cases here that we saw here uh, are considered, each one of them is considered as a single stage, um, despite having two units, but it's a single stage. Uh, in case of multi-stage uh, uh, separation uh, towers, uh, we can have something like a distillation column, like a tray column, but in this case it is a tray column for liquid-liquid extraction. We have two liquids, one flowing from the top of the column to its bottom, and the second is flowing from the bottom to the top. Um, and here comes one important point which we never discussed in distillation is how we route the fluids. In case of distillation, we have a gas and the liquid, and in, in, it's, it's very, very uh, intuitive that the gas should be routed or fed to the column from the bottom because it's, it's less dense compared to the, uh, the liquid phase. But in this case, we have two liquids and they have comparable densities, so it's important to, to see which one of them is going to be routed from the top and the bottom. Um, so there is no uh, kind of rule that the solvent is from the top or the, from the bottom. It depends on the densities of the two liquids. So we have a heavy liquid, which is the more dense liquid, is going from the top to the bottom, and the less dense is flowing from, from the bottom to the top. In most of the cases, the dense liquid is the feed, and the less dense is the solvent, and that's why it says here the coalesced solvent. Um, and here the light solvent because in, in this case it's considering the solvent as the light component but uh, it's, it's not uh, it's not always the case and sometimes we have the solvent as the more dense liquid and it's fed from the top so it's important to keep in mind or, or to to uh, um, like notice which one of them is the more dense fluid there is other shape of the multi-stage column which is the agitated tower where we have uh, the the calming sections which are just separators between the mixing blades and there is a small space for the fluids to flow down and up from each one of these stages so that we have enough residence time in each one of these stages so the mixing happens efficiently 
so this is this is mainly the point uh, or the the point that I want to cover uh, as like a revision of the background before going to Aspen Plus. I have already gone through all the details in the Microsoft Excel series, so I'm gonna put the link to the videos um, in this uh, the, video, the description of this video, so that you can check the governing equations and the ternary diagrams and how we deal with them and how we do the manual calculations. And I have already solved some uh, problems for single and multi stages. In, Aspen Plus, in Microsoft Excel, so it's, it's going to be good to check it if you are interested. <clears throat> um, so uh, the problem that we're going to solve is the same problem that they solved in Microsoft Excel, um, and I thought it's a good idea to solve it once here and once there so that we can compare the results uh, from the manual calculations and from the uh, simulation software. Um, the problem that we had is uh, uh, extracting acetic acid from a mixture of water uh, and acetic acid using isopropyl ether. The feed is uh, 100 kilo, 150 kilograms per hour of water with 30 uh, mass percent acetic acid. And the solvent is a uh, fresh solvent of uh, pure uh, diisopropyl ether. Um, and the goal is to see uh, if we use a single stage how uh, or what will be the extract and raffinate flow rates and compositions. So what we have here in Aspen Plus, I have already defined the three components, the water, acetic acid, and isopropyl ether. And I used for the methods uh, in RTL HOC because this is the, um, the suitable method. We have polar components. The three components are polar. And we have a carboxylic acid, which is the um, acetic acid. That's why we use the HOC. Uh, model. Uh, you can check the method, uh, method assistant and you can find other methods like the NRTL uh, NTH should, should work as well for such cases. Anyways, for now this is what I have uh, for the properties environment. Now we go to the simulation environment. I have defined the two streams, the feed and the um, for solvent, the feed is at 20 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere at 150 kilograms per hour for 70% by mass water and 30% by mass uh, acetic acid. The first solvent is at the same pressure and temperature at 450 kilograms per hour and 100% diisopropyl ether. <clears throat> uh, and now let's see how we can achieve the liquid liquid extraction in Aspen Plus. Uh, we mentioned before that uh, the, the single stage consists of two units, which is the mixing unit and the separation unit. Um, uh, but in Aspen Plus, we don't need to do both. Uh, we can use the decanter, which is uh, used for modeling two-phase liquid-liquid decanters. Um, it accepts more than one feed stream. Uh, I'm going to call it extract one. We, it, it accepts more than one uh, feed stream. Um, uh, and that's why it, it, it can do the mixing in situ in, in place. So you don't have to, of course, you can do a mixing and then uh, separation stage. But if you want to do them both in one place, it's going to be OK. It says feed required one or more. Um, and, and these are the two streams that you, you're going to connect. Um, now we have two output streams. One of them is called the first liquid, and one of them is called the second liquid. Um, so I'm, I'm going to connect the streams and then we will see what we mean by first liquid and what we mean by the second liquid because this is this is very critical actually. Uh, it might not be uh, as important here as it's going to be for the uh, multi-stage liquid liquid extraction units. So we mentioned that we have two liquids. Um, let's go back to the presentation here. We have two liquids, one flowing from the top to the bottom and the other from the bottom to the top. The in, in multi-stage, uh, and, and I'm going to do the same for both, so uh, so that we don't get confused between the single stage and the multi-stage. Um, uh, in the multi-stage, it considers the first liquid as the liquid fed to the column from the top, which is the dense liquid. So this is what it calls the, the first liquid, and the less dense liquid is considered as the second liquid. Um, this is how it's defined, so I'm, I'm, I don't have any clue why they, they use this as the first liquid and why this as the second liquid, but this is how it works. So this is the first liquid, which should be the, the more dense liquid. I don't know which of them is the more dense liquid, so I have to check the densities here in the review, um, in the review uh, button here. Uh, we will see the spe specific gravities. This is water 1 and the isopropyl ether is 0.72 so it's even less than 
seven, uh, less than three quarters of the density of water. So the isopropyl ether is the less dense liquid, so it's the second liquid, so it's gonna be the extract layer. And for the raffinate layer, it's gonna be considered the first layer, or the first layer. Um, and now we're done with the connections, and now we can check what inputs we need to put here. The pressure is, is one atmosphere, the temperature is 20 Celsius, and let's see what are the components, uh, what we have here. So we, we, can, we can run the simulation, and it's going to be done, uh, and, um, and, and I can run it now, but uh, there is one part here that I didn't fill, and it's important uh, to fill uh, here. Uh, and this is important because of the first and second liquid thing that I just mentioned before um, which is uh, how you can define the first and second liquid so in in this case it's it's not uh, mandatory to define the first and second liquid and I don't understand uh, exactly how the software defines the first and second liquid for the single stage um, and that's why you can tell him that you are considering the second liquid as the stream that contains uh, or which is rich in which component either water or isopropyl ether so in, in our case, it's going to be the isopropyl ether, and it tells here that the stream that contains more than 50% of isopropyl ether is considered as the second liquid. You can make it 60, 70%, whatever the value, but this is how you can define the first and the second liquid. It, it's going to run without, without this, but in this case, uh, it, it can flip the first and second liquid. So. If, if you are calling this as the extract and this is the raffinate, then you have to uh, to tell him which is the extract and which is the raffinate. So now we can run the simulation and see the results uh, that we have. So for the results that we have here, uh, we will see that uh, I'm, I'm going to put this and this side by side so can, that we can uh, compare the results. Um, so here, these are the mass flows. It, uh, it says that the extract is 470, almost 474. I have it here, 484 um, uh, kilograms per hour. And for the raffinate, it's 116. Here is 126. So it's, it's uh, 10 kilograms per hour difference between the Aspen Plus and the Microsoft Excel software. So it's not a big difference uh, but now let's see uh, the mass flows that we have or let's see the mass fractions because this is going to be easy to compare um, so these are the mass fractions of the extract layer and these are the mass fractions of the extract layer this is the uh, a which is the acetic acid it's 5.8 here it's 4.8 the uh, isopropyl ether 93.9 .9, here is 92.4 and this is 1.2 which is here 1.7 so there are some differences but it's not a very big difference um, in the raffinate layer it's gonna be more uh, more big differences than it was in the extract layer here uh, we have 14.5 of acetic acid uh, here 17.6 so it's a bigger difference um, isopropyl ether is 2.4 here here is 3.7 almost 3.7 this water is 78.7 here is 83.1 so there are some differences between both and if we take a look at the mass flows you'd see that the differences are uh, more pronounced here so here in the extract layer we have um, uh, uh, this is the uh, I'm sorry, oh, these are the masses I'm sorry um, uh, we have 96.3 here is 99.2 this is 22.2 and this this is the point that i want to highlight actually which is uh, the the acetic acid i have here 22.7 and 22.2 so it seems that it's like 50 50 um, it, it removed 50 percent of the uh, uh, of the acetic acid but here it removed more than that it removed 28 uh, kilograms per hour compared to 22 um, and the difference is mainly due to the difference in the uh, equilibrium relations or the extract and raffinate uh, um, envelopes that we have so in microsoft excel here i used experimental data to define the extract layer and the raffinate layer um, in case of Aspen Plus, it's not using experimental data. However, it, it's using the thermodynamic model to generate the equilibrium relations, which is basically or mainly the K values for the liquid, liquid, uh, or the two liquid stages. Uh, I mean phases. So uh, that's why the the difference is uh, is like this. Um, and now, if we take a look at the summary, uh, we would see, or I mean, the results here.
it's, it's going to give you some information about the temperatures, the duties th that you, you have because I'm, I'm keeping the temperature constant and there is some heat of mixing and that's why there is some duty that has to be uh, produced or, or generate or, or added, uh, I mean removed from the, the uh, from the unit, but this is the the first and uh, the first liquid to the total liquid is the kind of confusing uh, point here. It says that 53.9 uh, is the mass of the first or, or the amount of first liquid to the amount of the total liquid, but this is not what we see here for for the outputs that which which are, are very close to what we have. It's 48, 484 uh, compared to 116. Uh, so, so this this can by no means be 50, 54 percent. So uh, it seems that something is is not right. But when we see um, the phase equ phase equilibrium, it's gonna give the same thing. It's uh, it's giving how the each one of the components is split and the x's. But this is these are not the values that we saw. Um, and to understand why there is some difference, the values that's put here are the values by moles, not by mass. So for the mole flows, we see that this 5.05 and this is 5.92. So this this is 50 something percent. So this is how the values are calculated. And for the mole fractions, you'd see the values 92.99, which are the same values that were uh, that we saw in the um, in the results tab, which is uh, in the phase equilibrium tab. So this is just a point that I wanted to uh, point out before. Uh, I finished the video so that you can uh, understand how the uh, numbers are put. So this is all for this video. Um, in the next video, we'll see how we can do the multi-stage liquid-liquid extraction in Aspen Plus. So I'll see you then, inshallah. Goodbye.